Hey friends, Apple just announced new Apple Watch and iPhone models, so which one to buy as a developer? I'm using an Apple Watch 6 and it is still powerful enough, but it is scratched and battery no longer holds all day. So I'm getting an Apple Watch Ultra 2 with all day long battery life. And by all day long I mean day and night, to track my sleep during the night and exercises during the day. Currently, I must charge my scratched Apple Watch 6 twice a day to keep it running in this schedule. I think Apple Watch is fine to upgrade once in a 3 plus years and if I didn't want to get Apple Watch Ultra for fitness and development reasons, I would skip a few more generations. If you are looking forward to getting Apple Watch Ultra to develop applications needing access to the submerged sensor, first ask Apple to provide access Submerge API is closed, you just can't use it. You have to ask Apple for approval. I asked it months ago and still waiting for approval. Probably will never get it, I don't know why. Okay, whatever, let's talk about iPhone. Regular iPhone 15 models are just last year's iPhone 14 Pro, but in new colors. <laughs> so if you followed last year updates about iPhone Pro, basically that is the same phone. Yes, we are getting dynamic island, better screen, better cameras, all the same stuff. As a developer, I'm happy to see that more devices are getting dynamic island. I'm using iPhone 14 Pro Max and I like Dynamic Island, I would not like to switch to iPhone without it, but I'm not saying it's a killer feature, but it is really a really nice one to have. So yes, even iPhone 15 is last year's features a new package. It is still a great device to get an upgrade from older phone, I don't know, if you are still on iPhone 10 or something older and you are looking for upgrade iPhone 15, no-brainer. Okay, but let's talk about iPhone 15 Pro. For short, that was the main product in the keynote and got most of attention. I usually buy Pro models because they have the best cameras and I use them almost daily. What are you getting if you have a budget and willing to spend on the new iPhone Pro? A new lighter titanium case is nice, but you will hide it behind protection anyway, so no one will see it. <laughs> Even it looks cool. The new action button is good excuse for developers to upgrade. By default, the action button is still silent switch, but the user can choose between a set of actions that the button should do, and one of the actions is launching shortcut. As a developer, I can think of what kind of action could be useful for my apps to launch it by button, by physical button on device, and implement support for those features. That could be start of the exercise, something like that, you know. CPU and GPU upgrades are significant. Apple spent plenty of time on Keynote talking about that, but I'm developing relatively simple apps and those apps should run on the oldest and cheapest supported devices anyways. The camera is my reason for most iPhone upgrades, but if you do not develop an app that uses it heavily, like a photo app, you don't need the latest and greatest iPhone. So should you get it as a programmer, certainly not. You can get all the work done by staying a few generations behind and dynamic island and action button can be tested on simulators. If you are short on budget, you better save the money for Apple Vision Pro device. It is way harder to develop virtual reality apps without having a device to play around and test other apps to see how you would like to build your application. For content creators, this camera upgrade is significant. iPhone 15 Pro is getting better, low light performance, but more importantly, new focal lens. Having camera like that in a pocket is really big deal, and if you're earning money creating photo or video content, it is easy to justify upgrade. I'm using 15 to 35 millimeter focal length for most of my videos and photos on Instagram, on YouTube, everywhere. So probably I don't need that camera upgrade. I would like to have it, but I don't know, not for that money. Special video recording could be useful in the future, but we will see that in the next year because Apple Vision Pro is not around yet. And I don't know, we will need to wait for that for maybe one more year to see that here in Europe. And yeah, finally it seems that Apple moving all devices, including iPhone and iPods Pro to the USB-C, and that enables better 
data transfer speeds and external memory usage for video recording and you need one cable less in your backpack when you are traveling. I don't know, it is not a real reason to upgrade, but it is very nice feature to have. I'm getting my wife an iPhone 15 Pro Max because she needs an upgrade, but I may skip this year because I'm using my mirrorless camera for most of the content, so I don't really need that new and upgraded camera that I have in, but we will have an iPhone 15 Pro Max. And for developer, there is no so many features to implement. Also, those iPhones are surprisingly expensive, especially if you want the iPhone Pro Max with beefy memory and all the new camera features. I could easily buy used motorcycle for that money if I would skip upgrades this year.